most important one is sin. Sin in general gives access to the devil. Now what is sin? Sin is breaking God's law. God's law. What is written in the word of God? When you break God's law, we are giving the devil the Lord, honor us by your presence this morning, Jesus. Honor us by your presence, Lord. Honor us by your presence, name of God. But 
Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. When Israel went, you know, to fight um, this city, and then it was a small city, but they were defeated. Then they were asking themselves, what has happened? Only to find out that there was somebody who has given access to the enemy, who has given access to the devil, so the devil was able to, to mount them and was able to overcome them. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9, I would like us to read it. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. The Bible is telling us through the Holy Spirit uh, by Apostle Peter that, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil. Your enemy, the devil. In another version, they said, Your adversary, the devil, prowls around. In another version, it says, Rooming around. Like who? Like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. He just takes the appearance of a roaring lion to make, to, to create fear in our heart. Looking for someone to devour. Looking for somebody to devour. He cannot devour you if he doesn't get hold of you. He cannot devour you if he doesn't get access to you. He must get access. That's why he is always around us looking for access, for door for opening door, for opportunity, for occasion, so that he may enter in us. So I would like first to attract your attention about this name devil. Devil in Greek is, I mean, diabolos. Diabolos is the same with devil. And it's the same with Satan. It's the same origin. It's the same. And that name, Satan, diabolos, devil, it means an accuser, an adversary, an opposer, an obstructor. Let me say it again. It means an accuser, the one who accuses you. An adversary, the one who competes with you. Remember, the devil competes with you because he lost a place of praise and worship that you have taken, you and me have taken. They, let me tell you something. There is no creature from whom God takes pleasure than he takes pleasure to the, from the human being. You as a human being, when you are praising God, is more than the praise and the, uh, the, 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 the worship of the angels. It's even more than the 24 elders. It's more than that. Do you know that those great beings in the presence of God, they are actually taking your praises and giving it to God? They are not just using their own praise. They are taking, they, they are taking your praise and my praise and they are giving it to the Lord. Just to tell you how important it is that your praise to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God never said that he is uh, dwelling in the midst of praise of angels. But the Bible said he is dwelling in the midst of praise of the people of Israel. Angels are not the people of Israel. You and me, we are Israel of God. So God is dwelling in the midst of our praise. Our praises carries our God. God, you know, as, as much as weak as you can seem that you are, as nothing you can think that you are, you are so precious to God. You are so precious that you cost him the life of his only one son. Can you see how important you are? When the devil, when Satan, Lucifer, when he gets lost, God did not come after him. But when you get lost, he came after you. He came after you calling your name. Where are you? Where are you? He came to look for you because you are so precious to him. There is no creatures in heaven and on earth that God never created with his own hands. All the creatures that were created by the way. But when it comes to you, God created you in two dimensions. He said, let's make man in our spirit. He made him in the spirit. And he came in the flesh and he made, he took his hand. He become, he become dirty. God become dirty with his hand by taking this uh, man and making a statue and he breathed on him. You see, that is showing the, the father part of God that God is ready to get dirty for you. Oh, you don't understand that. God is ready to get dirty for you. That's why he accepted to become sin at the cross. The very same one in the Garden of Eden, he got dirty with the mud. And when he was supposed to create you again, he went at the cross. He got dirty with your sin. Because he wanted to create you again. But this time, 
Not anyhow. He wanted to bring an upgraded version of yourself. Oh, you are an upgraded version of yourself. God upgraded you. After making Adam, he came and upgraded you differently. You see, he made Adam with the clay. But with you, he made you with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that you can be different from the first one. So that you may be able to spend eternity with him. Hallelujah. So the devil is your adversary. The devil is your opposer. He will always do everything to oppose you. And he is your obstructor. He is your hinder. And the hindrance of your life. He will always do everything to stop you from progressing. Hallelujah. Amen. He will always do everything to stop you. So you need to understand that the devil has a role. Amen. The role of the devil is to accuse you. He is the one who always brings guilty mind in you. Who always tell you all this is your fault. All this is because of you. He will always bring guiltiness in you. That guiltiness that you see, that you have in you, does not come from you. It comes from your accuser. There is a lady who told me here that her uh, older sister was so guilty that she couldn't take it, take it anymore. She went and killed herself. She killed herself. She's dead today. Why? Because of the guilty conscience. The, the accuser will come tell you, you know, what you have done is so wrong. It's so, listen to me. There is nothing too strong to be forgiven by the blood of Jesus. There is nothing too strong. Whatever you have done, if you come to him and uh, bow and uh, recognize and confess uh, the blood of Jesus has the power to remove it. Amen. What I like with the blood of Jesus, it doesn't cover sins. No. It removes yes. sins. Yes. When people come later and they look where it was, it's no longer there. Amen. When it is covered, if we, we, we step on it, you can still find it. But the blood of Jesus doesn't cover sins. The blood of Jesus removes that's why John the Baptist, when he saw the Lamb of God coming to him, he said, here is the Lamb of God who removes the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So the devil is our accuser. He will accuse us by bringing false accusation, but also by bringing right accusation that we have already confessed. He will always tell you, he will wrongly accuse you, tell you things, that you are not responsible of it. There is a young lady who was always guilty because the day of her birth, the mother died. Then all her life, she was in herself thinking that she is the cause of her mother's death. She have nothing to do with that death. If your mother died, it's not because of you. Now the devil it will always bring those false accusations that your mother died because of you. If you were not born, your mother could have seen me in life. It is not because of you. That is the accusation. The false accusation of the devil. But sometimes the devil accuses us rightly. You have done something wrong. You have caused somebody to continue to accuse you. They continue to tell. Listen, when the devil starts accusing you of something you have done, there is only one choice. Do not be guilty. Do not carry the guiltiness. Go back and confess. For it is written in the book of 1 John. If we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to continue to accuse you. That is wrong. You know, when you do something wrong, he will always accuse you. That's how you see when people have done something wrong, then they lose their peace. You lose your peace because this is what the devil wants. To torment you. So you do not have peace. That is his role. Come back to the Lord quickly. And confess your sins. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil is also the tempter. He is the one who is given the role to tempt us. To push us or to pull us to do wrong. To sin against God. Let me tell you brothers and sisters. No matter how holy you can be. You cannot go away from temptation. Temptation will be tempted. Everyone will be tempted. Even the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible said he was tempted. He went to the, the wilderness to fast for 40 days. And after fasting, the Bible said to be tempted. Actually, temptation is not always something bad. Temptation is something that reveals who you are. Temptation will show who you are really. When you are tempted, it will bring out who you are. You know, sometimes here, we are so happy we are singing the Lord because we never been tempted. When you'll be tempted, it will show if you love the Lord or not. 
It will show if you know the Lord or not. It will show if you care about God or not. When you've never been shaken by temptation, you think that everything is okay. Until you will be tempted, it will show. It will give you the opportunity to show your love to the Lord. Hallelujah. So the devil comes also to tempt us. Be careful. Temptation does not mean sin. To be tempted doesn't mean I've sinned. To be attracted by evil doesn't mean, doesn't mean you have sinned. Because sometimes the devil will come to you and bring condemnation to you because you feel like doing sin. As long as you haven't decided to do it, it's not yet sin. It will become sin when you have decided to do it. Even if you haven't done it, but if you have decided in your heart, you have concluded, I will do it, you are just waiting for the occasion, that when sin becomes sin. Am I making sense to somebody? Amen. The devil is our obstructor. He is our opposer. That's to say the devil will always obstruct our road. He will always block us. He will always prevent us to advance. He will always prevent us to progress. Always prevent us to do better. Always prevent us to go forward. That is his role. Hallelujah. But you and me, a children of God, we need not to give him access. Because for him to do anything in our life, he need first to be given the right. Now, there are principles that you need to understand and you need to stand upon. One of the principles is, the Bible says, God says, the earth have been given to the sons of men and the heaven have been given to God. Heaven belongs to God. The earth belongs to you and me. This is what God said. That the earth has been given to you and me. So if you don't understand that you are the one, the earth has been given to you, the element of the nature will always overcome you. But if you understand that, it is written. Because the word of God is like the law. The word of God is the truth. It's trustworthy. God said the earth has been given to the sons of men. You and me, the earth has been given to us. So the element of the earth cannot go above us. So nobody can enter in the earth and do whatever I want to do in the earth without my permission. Because it has been given to me. Hallelujah. So even the devil, he knows that he cannot work in the earth if he does not receive your access, your permission. Now, what the devil does, he doesn't do it in a way to explain to you, listen, I am the devil, hello sir. Uh, yes, inter, okay. I miss the devil, Mr. Satan, Mr. Lucifer, Mr. Diabolos. I'm here so that you can give me access in your house. It doesn't come that way. It comes in the subtle way. It comes in the way that uh, he changes himself. The Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians that he takes the appearance of the angels of light. He takes the appearance of angels of light so that you may give him access. He comes beyond certain things that you think that they are so much innocent. That you think that they are harmless. That you think that, ah, oh, this one, it cannot harm. Behind those harmless things under bracket, the devil gets an access in your life, in our lives. Hallelujah. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, the last part, the Bible says, do not give access to the devil. Do not give access to the devil. Hallelujah. So God doesn't want us to give access to the devil because it is possible to give him access. But if we decide, then we can give him access. Now what is access? Access is a mean, reason, an opportunity to approach or to enter a place is a permission, is a liberty, is the ability to enter a place, is a way to communicate with a person or a thing. That is access. So access is a mean. If I give you, if I, I tell you, can you please build for me a, a house? I need to give you access. Meaning, I will tell you where you should build that house. I will give you all the, the how do you call it, the, the uh, title deeds, the permission from the municipality to build, and then I will give you things that you should build the house with. I will give you money and all the material. That is a permission. That is a access. That is a mean 
So without access, even if you ask me, if you don't give me the mean, I cannot enter. So access is, as I said, opportunity. If you do not give a person an opportunity to talk to you, he's not going to talk to you. Because you did not give him that opportunity. You didn't give him access. So we need to be careful because what the devil is looking in our life is an opportunity. Somebody say opportunity. Opportunity, opportunity is the pile of circumstances that make something possible. That makes something happening. That is an opportunity. So what the devil is looking, is looking for circumstances in your life that can allow him to do whatever I want to do in your life. So access is a permission, is your validation for his entrance or his access in your life. That is, what you say, access is that permission that you give. Now, the permission can be voluntary or involuntary. You see, the devil doesn't, doesn't mind giving him a voluntary, conscious or unconscious permission, he will still come. That's why, brothers and sisters, it's different from our God. Our God respects you. Before him to come to your life, he wants your permission, your voluntary permission. But the devil doesn't mind. That's why there are people who got demon possessed because he went to read a certain book. Just a simple book that he didn't read. He read, he read a book. By reading that book, he was demon possessed. Then he's asking himself, when we start praying for the person, demons start manifesting. Then we ask, how did you enter here? I entered there because he didn't read my book. Ah. But when the person went to read the book, the intention was not to allow the devil to enter. Now the devil is there. How did he enter? He didn't give him a access which is a access which was not a voluntary access. But it was an access to. That's why we need to be, Apostle Peter said, be alert, be prudent, because our adversary is looking for any opportunity to get access. Hallelujah. Access is also communication. You must be careful to communicate with the devil, because by communication can give him access. Remember Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, our mother Eve. He heard, she gave the devil time to have a conversation. If you're not strong, don't confess with the devil. If you're not strong, don't, don't, don't confess with your mind, especially the dirty mind. Don't go and read books if you're not strong enough to understand and to refute wrong things. There are people who got more confused. He wanted to read other books. Listen, read the Bible. If you are not strong enough, stop going reading other books. They're going to confuse you for nothing. Read the Bible. Because the Bible, if you read it, you will never get it wrong. You can read other books, you can get it wrong. But the Bible, you will never get it wrong. Because what you read from other books, you must be enough, you must have enough knowledge to distinguish what is wrong from that book and what is good from that book. Am I making sense to somebody? Amen. Do not have conversation with the devil if his her, her, her wrong or her mistake is to have a conversation with the devil. She had a conversation with Satan. She started talking to the devil and the devil tricked her in the conversation. Be careful the person with whom you are having a conversation. Hallelujah. Because by simple conversation, you can give access to the devil. Amen. There are things people walk up in you just by the conversation you have with those people. He'll start telling you how beautiful you are, how nice eyes you have, you have how this and this, and then it will create something in you. And give him access. Most of the men who are here, the woman that is your wife today, gave you access just by the conversation she allowed you to have. If she never gave you that conversation, maybe until today, you wouldn't have been together. But if she gave you the opportunity to talk to her. Be careful to whom you are giving your ears because you can give access to the devil. Be careful the kind of friend you allow him to talk to you. The kind of, there are people who 
listen to them at all. Don't say let me listen, then I will I will I will see. Hey, don't listen to them because there are things that are forbidden to be listened. If you listen to those things, they can give access to the devil. The very same way Eve listened to Satan and give access to, to the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, people can get access to your life from far. For a person to have access in your life, he doesn't need necessarily to be in your life. He can access your life from far. And especially today with all those technology. You know, I remember one day I had a problem with my computer at work. And then I called the IT guys. They were in their office. I was in my office. And then I told them, no, I have a problem with my computer. I can't work. And then those guys said, oh, can you please just give us the host, host, host number? I didn't know what is mean the host number. Host number, every computer has a number there. Then I gave them the host number. You know what I did? From their office, just by the host number, they entered in my, my computer. So I start seeing them, they start seeing what I'm seeing in my computer. Whatever I'm seeing in my computer, they are seeing it from their office. They say, okay, 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 leave it. We're going to do something for you. And then they start manipulating and they fix my computer from their side. The devil is able to manipulate your life from far. Is able to enter your life from far. That's why you are seeing brothers and sisters. Nowadays, the devil doesn't need a demon to possess you. He can just co control you from far. By the WhatsApp that you are doing, by the movie you are watching, by all those things, he can already control your feelings. He can control your feelings just by the movie that he gives you. That just by the music that is allowing you to listen. Just by the music you are listening, he can already impact your feelings. It can only impact your life. That's why brothers and sisters, the Bible says, do not give access. Access is footstep. Do not allow the devil to get the footstep. You see, the problem with the devil, the moment he gets the footstep in, to take him out becomes a problem. Now it's going to be days and days of fasting and prayer for him to go out. Now it's going to be a problem. The moment he enters in our life, he comes to do one thing, to mess up our lives. There are certain mess that we are in is because we've given a footstep to the devil in our lives. And that footstep doesn't need to be a big one. It can be just a little one. You see, I will say to the end, I tend to understand one thing. When people do not know God, Father, they do wrong things. The devil doesn't mind. But when you and me who are claiming that we know God, if we do the same thing, negligible in the eyes of people, but you ask yourself, how come other people are doing the same thing? Nothing is happening to them. But me, I do the same small mistake, and then it is magnified. It is because there is somebody behind it who is magnifying it. The devil will magnify it because he takes every small opportunity to hit you in a way that you cannot stand up anymore. That's why the Bible said they don't give him access. Because when he gets access, he will hit us in a way that he wants to kill us. He wants to finish us. He, he, he will hit us in a way that it is the last opportunity given to him to hit us and to finish us. That's why you see, when it's about you, it's always terrible. When it's about other people, you ask yourself, but other people are doing the same thing. Nothing is happening to them. Why me? Just once. It is because you are different. Because you, the devil, is not in you. He is roaming around you. You have, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God knows. The devil knows that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then he wants to get access in your life. Amen. Know that Satan is so jealous of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what gives access to the devil in our life? Hallelujah. Amen. Can I please give you this job? Of being the watch woman or the watchman of your brother or your sister next to you. If he's trying to sleep, wake him up. Because I believe if I was Trevor Noah here, <laughs> I'm sure none of us will slumber here. You know Trevor Noah? If you go to Trevor Noah uh, uh, show, I'm telling you, he won't sleep. You are, provided that you know English. Because if you don't know English, then it's really boring. <laughs> if you go to Trevor Noah's, um, sure, I'm telling you, you'll be enjoying it. 
You be away. Wow, wow, because it's so nice. Here is more than travel over. The word of this morning is giving you life. Amen. And one of the ways the enemy wants to give you access, we learn it now, is to make you not listen to the word. Amen. Because if you don't listen to the word, you don't close the door. Amen. You leave your doors open. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can have access. Now, what gives access to the devil in our lives? There are many things that gives access. But the most important one is sin. Sin in general gives access to the devil. Now what is sin? Sin is breaking God's law. God's law. What is written in the word of God? When you break God's law, we are giving the devil the opportunity to enter. We are giving him the right. We are giving him the legal access. Because there are certain access that are not legal. But sin gives the devil legal access. Sin is breaking God's law. What is sin? Sin is also knowing the good to do and not doing it. It gives access to the devil. What is sin? Sin is also doing things which are not product of conviction. That you just do them by doing. So be careful to not do things by doing. Do things by conviction. So that is sin. But I just thought that if I just say sin, it's going to be broad. And in reality, sin that gives access to the devil is not the sin that you confess. It's the sin that you live in it. Am I making sense to somebody? It's the sin that you live in it. It's the sin that you have become comfortable in it. Because sin that you have become comfortable to it, if it keeps the door open, then the devil can find access. But sin that you confess, it will still keep the door closed. So be careful. I don't want you to think that every time you sin, you fell in sin, that, oh, it's true, all the demons are in me. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I want, I want to enumerate certain things that gives access to the devil. Now, for the first thing that gives access to the devil is called anger. Somebody say anger. anger. Somebody say anger. anger. Anger is the same like the Holy Spirit is the same like wine. You see, when you drink wine, you drink wine and become drunk, what happened to you? You start doing things commanded by wine. Most of things you do when you are drunk, you'll be surprised when they tell you, ah, I'm not going to do this. And most of things you do under the power of the Holy Ghost, you'll also be surprised to see, oh, was I saying that? Was I turning on the floor? The same thing, anger, when it comes to you, it will take you like alcohol. It will take you like a drunk person and will lead you to do things that you wouldn't be doing in a normal circumstances. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 20 <clears throat> that we should be careful with anger because the anger of men does not accomplish God's righteousness. So anger is a dangerous thing, my brother. <clears throat> when anger comes in our lives, it will lead you to do things that you will regret. And from my small experience, 90% if not more of decisions you take when you are angry are wrong. You tend to regret them later on. Most of the decisions you take when you are angry, they are wrong. Why? Because you are not on your sane mind. You tell your husband things when you are angry that you wouldn't told him in a normal circumstances. You insult your wife when you are angry. And then say, no, honey, sorry, I was angry. What are you trying to say? Honey, I'm sorry, it was not me, it was the anger in me. See, anger in you will lead you to do things. Will lead you to tell people things. And you don't understand when anger comes, the devil knows. Now you're about to open the door. Because you're about to say things, you're about to do things that you're going to regret. Many people today are regretting because there are things they did under anger that become so costly even today in their lives. That's what the Bible says. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. You are angry at your wife, angry at your husband, at your daughter, at your son, at your mother, at your father. That anger is dangerous. If you don't manage that anger, it's going to open the doors to the enemy, and the enemy is
is going to take over your life. Hallelujah. Amen. What open doors to the devil? I am not saying that you should not get angry. Paul speaks to the Ephesians. He said that when you get angry, do not sin. Do not allow the sun to slip, to go down, you still being angry. How often do you go to sleep angry? Married people, how often do you go to bed? The wife is looking on the left and the husband is on the right. You don't talk to the entire night. And sometimes, what I don't understand, you will not sleep both of you. Everyone will try to close their eyes to feel that I'm sleeping, to, to show that me, I don't care. I'm really sleeping, but you know you're not sleeping. You are not sleeping at all. But, and you spend the entire, the Bible says, when you get angry, make sure that you sort it out before you go to bed. There are people that are getting anger even today, even in the church. They come even in the pulpit with their anger in their heart. Angry at this one, angry at that one because of something that has happened. When you do, you do things like that, your door is wide open. Hallelujah. Amen. Another thing that opens doors is envy. When you are envying people, when you live in the life of envy, envy is desiring what other people have. Now listen to this. Let me make it clear. Desiring what other people have because you qualify them that they don't qualify to have what they have. You qualify more. That envy. Envy is when you look at your brother and he's having a, wearing a suit, you say that you are envying that suit because you feel that he does not deserve to have that suit. You are the one who deserves to have that. That is envy. Envy is opening a door because every envy will always lead to jealousy. There is no envy without jealousy. Every place where there is envy, jealousy will come. And every place where these two guys have entered, the last one who have we spoke about, anger will come. When you are envying, you lead you to jealousy. When you become jealous, it means that you can no longer appreciate anything that the brother or the sister does. When you are jealous, it closes your eyes to appreciate the good of the person that you are jealous of. If I'm jealous of you, you can do everything. It will always be bad to me. Come on, because I'm always jealous. And that jealousy comes because of my envy. Because I feel that you don't qualify. And if you don't qualify, whatever comes out of you, for me, is only going to be wrong. You see why you always criticize me? You see why you always criticize the brother next to you or the sister next to you? It's because you have already said that he doesn't deserve. Are you getting it? Because you always say he doesn't deserve and you think that he cannot get it, then you are jealous. Every place where there is jealousy, there is anger. You are angry at the person. When the person just is talking, you, have you ever been in the place who somebody said, you know, that brother, when he's just talking, I'm, I'm angry. Go deeper. You see, this is the place where you say go deeper. Tell him go deeper. Go deeper, Papa. So if you go deeper, you'll find that under that anger, there is jealousy. And if you go deeper, you see under that jealousy, there is envy. You have been envying what the brother is doing. When they give the sister to sing, it's just singing. Singing. Ah. Even when you are praying yourself, in your heart you say, ah. If you must go, ah. <laughs> oh my God. You see, when the Lord is looking at our heart, the way we are judging other people when they are doing things. Yeah. See, the pastor is preaching, you know, you should hold the microphone with the left hand. But what is the, the real problem? You are jealous. Yeah. And without knowing, you are opening, you are giving an access to the devil. Because instead of you listening the good thing that I'm saying, you don't listen to it anymore. And then him is getting, getting what a footstep in your life. You see sometimes how demons are entering our lives. How the devil is, I told you, even if the demon are not in your life, he can still manipulate you from far. Yeah. By using jealousy and anger, he can manipulate you. How the devil enter again in our life, gets the, the, the right in our life, 
by living a life without discipline. A life with no discipline is an open door to the devil. Let, let hear what the wise man is saying. Psalm 25 verse 28. Sorry, Proverbs 25 verse 28. Proverbs 25 verse 28. Proverbs 25 28. The Bible says that a city, I mean a man who is not, okay, like a city whose walls are broken though, and then, sorry, are broken through is a person who lacks discipline. Here is a principle. Every person must have principles. Principles create your character. Beloved, I've learned it with a high cost that you need to have principles in your life. You must have the ability to say no at a certain stage of your life. You can't please everyone. There are people where you must say no. There are people who must say, I can't do that. The people must say, I cannot go that far. That is part of discipline. That is part of character. So if you do not have discipline and character, the Bible says you are like a city without walls. You are like a house without walls. What's going to happen to the house without walls? I mean, anybody can get access to that house. Why do you lock your house? Why do you lock your windows and lock it? Because you don't want an unwanted person to enter your house. So it's the same thing. When we live a life without discipline, discipline is, I don't do this. At this time, I sleep. I don't wear this. I don't go this way. You have to have those things in life. It is important. When you are a woman who is everywhere you can have, everywhere you can, one day, the enemy will get access. When you are a man, you can give your money to everyone. Everyone, buy me cup, buy me cup. Listen, there are people buy me cup. Say just no. You have the ability to buy coke, but you say no. Because by this buying coke, the coke that you buy, you bought it with your own money, that coke can create problems you. So you need to know that it is important for you to not give access. This side the devil have access. He gave me 20 rand. It's me that can give me more. He gave me this. It's me that can give me more. He gave me a heart. It's me that can give me more. He gave, he shaked my hand. Beloved, you must understand that you are not anyone. You are the son of the most high God. You are the daughter of the most high God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are holy for God. You are put aside. No matter what people can say about you, God sees you as a precious vessel to him. Don't, don't, don't just allow, allow anybody to access to you anyhow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, lack of principle is dangerous. You see? It's not a sin. It's not a sin. But, if you have lack of principles, the devil can find his foot step in your life. Hallelujah. Yeah. The other thing that gives access to the devil is adopting certain habits. Let me speak about those habits quickly because of time. Certain habits, certain habit gives access to the devil. What are those habits? Lack, lack of prayer. Me at home, I just pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Huh? This kind of lack of prayer, you are giving access. Remember, I was saying access, access, door, opportunity. Because you don't pray much. You'll give him opportunity to work in your life. Because those who do not pray, they're, gonna, they're not going to have power to overcome that dash. What Jesus said? Jesus said, the flesh, I mean the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, pray and watch. So if you don't pray, possibility for you to resist temptation becomes so small. Hallelujah. The habit of not meditating the word of God. You spend time on TV watching other movies, but when you have to meditate the word of God, you only meditate one verse. All these 
I have told you so. Pour les livres. Vous savez. All you. Vous savez. It's fine. Let me close tomorrow. Beloved, that habit of you not meditating the word of God, that habit of you only meditating on Sunday, only you opening your Bible on Sunday, do you know that among us res res respectable people, as you are, they look for their Bible on Sunday morning. Then start calling everyone. I put my Bible here last Sunday. Who took my Bible? How come your Bible, you took it, you, you remember it only on Sundays? Who took my Bible and go to your wife? You, you are stupid. Where's my Bible? I put it here. No, man. The problem is you have a problem. That's why he's having access. Because you don't meditate the word of God. The Bible says, this book shall not depart from your mouth. Shall meditate on it day and night. The habit of running away from services, not coming to church. <laughs> it is good. Remember what happened to our father, David. People were busy going for to fight him. He said, no, me, I fought too much. He stayed home when people are busy fighting. And the Bible said it was the time for the king to conquer. The time for the king to conquer. Him, the time of the king to conquer. Instead of going to conquer, he let Joab to conquer for him. He stayed home. And because he stayed home, the devil did what? Opened the eyes of the king to see somebody's wife, Bethsheba. You see, when we are praying here, and you, you are left at home doing nothing, be careful. The devil will open your eyes on the Bathsheba of your life. And the Bathsheba of your life can bring a lot of disaster in your life. People are praying here, you, you are at home. People are praying here, you, you are doing other things. People are praying here, you, you have nothing to do but you are at home. I don't understand how you are a child of God. We are having service here, but you, you are comfortably seated in front of your TV, I'm watching Manchester United. I mean, are you, are, are you serious? Are you okay? No, I'm going to sleep. And by the way, people always say, no, pastor, don't come to church because I was sleeping. If you look very, very well, they did not sleep. Yeah. They were busy with the phone. It's not sleeping. And I like God. I'm not going to give you sleep. Because time prayer, I was sleeping. No sleeping for you. And I'm on the phone. There are people who choose to do other things less important on the time of the service. Brother, you need to understand that coming to fellowship will protect you. It will strengthen. You see, now you are here. You get fed. You get strengthened. When you go out, you have more strength to overcome the devil. Imagine if you choose to not come here. You wouldn't receive this message. And then the devil will have a nexus in your life. So, fellowship is very important. Certain things that allow the devil to have access in our life is partying and cinema. You know, movies. There are certain movies, after watching them, they will uh, rise up everything in you. <clears throat> Many years ago, I was still a head of uh, youth in my church. I did a counseling of um, young people. The, the young the young man, the young lady came to accuse the young man that he, he, was, uh, he wanted to rape her. And then I asked him, what happened? He said, brother, I'm sorry. You know, at night, I stayed late on TV. And I watched those movies, those movies, those movies, those movies. After watching, 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 it went into my head. Then I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what I was doing. Then I went there. You see, watching the movie did what? Give the enemy the access. If you didn't watch that movie, if you didn't you just slept, nothing would have happened. How many things has happened to you? How wrong you have done after watching a movie? After listening an advice from a movie? How disturbed you have been after watching certain things? Or after listening to certain things? Be careful. Party. The Bible says we should more go to the house of funeral bed because there you will remember that one day you die. But in the house of party, you will not gonna remember that one day you die. You'll be just jiving. You know, you like only jiving every Friday. Every Friday jiving. Friday, Saturday jiving, and Sunday you must sleep. You don't come to church because you know you are too much tired. You are wasting your time. 
Hallelujah. You know, I, I wrote a lot of things, but because of time, let me uh, just say the most important things. The other thing that gives access to the devil is consulting Sangoma. Sangoma. I wanted to say this clearly here. Sangoma Inyanga. Um, uh, what else? Uh, witchcraft. Mandodna. Somebody told me, Pastor, I have a friend who's struggling to conceive. She told me, Pastor, you know, I'm seeing that woman, she mixed herbs and the Bible. When there is already mix, mix up of heaven, the Bible is not God anymore. God doesn't hit mix heaven, but you know, she uses herbs, but also with the Bible. You jump the Bible. <laughs> you know, there are those that are opening footstep were given to the devil without knowing. Something that gets lost in our house. Oh, something gets lost. No, we must go. Consider the Inyanga. And they, they change even the name. It's not the Sangoma, it's the Inyanga. You know, it's different. You know? Traditional healer. You know, make it nice. Traditional doctors. You know, be careful where you're going. Because it gives access. The devil doesn't mind. You just went there. When you give your hand, no, who did you steal this? Who did you steal it? Then you went there. You went there. Oh, we went there. They give you something. Put on the head. If it fails, it's not you. Pass. If, they put you, if it fell again, it's not you. Pass. When then you put your head in a bad position, then it, it starts. Right? <laughs> See, you were given the access to them. Because you entered in that house. You entered in their house. You went there. We have. Football players, football players, you know, this day because tomorrow we have a football match, all of us who shall sleep at the same tree. Tell them I'm a child of God. I don't sleep with the dead. Who do sleep there? I'm a child of you go sleep there, me, let me go sleep with my God. If God have allowed you to already reach that point, it means that they, they appreciate your work. You must, you must, you must, you must prevail. You must make what you, you have to count for other people. People, people will respect your God if you make them respect your God. If they, you, you cannot make them, they will play with your God. Hallelujah. Amen. So be careful. When you go and enter in this kind of places, there are people that demon possess because he showed his hand to those people that needed the hand. You know them? Let me read your hand. Okay. This one means, I want to consult the God. I want to see, what is the name of this guy again? Is that the name of that guy from um, Venom. Movie Miss. He's going to read. He's going to read. Bones. Nothing wrong, Pastor. There's nothing wrong. We enter there. We remove our shoes. We enter the place. It was just bone. Bone only. Papa, the devil doesn't do anything for doing them. He had an objective behind you. He wants to have access to your life. You want to dump those bones? You throw the bones? They come to the bone. God said, you should not go consult those who are doing those kind of things. The Bible said, you must consult your God. Amen. You have a God who is about those things. Consult that God. When you do that, you are giving access to the devil. Other things that gives access to the devil. Maybe I'm going to stop there in terms of what gives access. Sexual immorality. Sleeping with people that you do not have Covenants of marriage and covenant of, of you know, alliance of marriage. When you do that, it's also allowing the devil to enter. I know here in South Africa it's difficult to talk about that because people are telling me, hey, you know, Pastor, what are you talking about? This is Anzanzi. Anzanzi for sure. <laughs> the word of God is the same in Zanzi for sure, in the UK for sure, in the USA for sure, in Congo for sure, in Malawi for sure. In whatever for sure, the word of God is the same. Amen. What God disapproved in the USA, He will disapprove it in South Africa. What God disapproved in South Africa, He will disapprove it in Malawi. Well, Malawi, my brother from Malawi, he will disapprove it in Malawi. He will, he will disapprove it in uh, Lesotho. He will disapprove it everywhere. Are you getting me, brothers and sisters? Yeah. So, sexual immorality is that. And also, Another sexual immorality that people are doing nowadays, you see, now, nowadays, the, the Bible, you know, I was reading a scripture that said, 
People are finding other ways to sin. You know, special way to sin. Nowadays, it's on the phone. Far away, 5,000 kilometers. Pastor, no touch. We are just on the phone. Show me, show me. Then show. Do, do, then do. You get what I say? Yeah. On the phone, sexual immorality. It's our open doors to the devil. You think that is okay? You think there, there, there is a deliverance that I have assisted. There is the spirit of being chosen from a young lady. Then they told him, How did you eat here? He said, Pastor, you are, you are fighting us for, for nothing. Us who were passing, who were going to the next door, not to his house. To her house, we 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 had a mission to the next door. On our passage, we found her masturbating. Then we say, "Oh, okay, what opportunity? Let them tell us." So you see, demon they said they were going somewhere else, but because he gave them access, they did what? The internet. Somebody was saying, "There's a man of God who is saying that masturbation is not is not a sin." As long as you don't do, um, you don't get, do fantasy, you don't fantasy. But how can you do that without fantasy? It's not possible. Beloved, it is wrong. God doesn't want you to have that feeling before that time. Yeah. The Bible says you should not allow the, 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 the bird to go out of the cage. Because when the bird goes out of the cage, it's difficult to bring him back. I'm sorry, I know it's, I can see the way people are looking at me. The next thing I'm going to be stoned. I'm sorry for that. But I need to tell you, this is the truth. Amen. We need to talk about it. Hallelujah. Amen. That those things open. The, the, watching pornography, mm. it opens doors. When you watch pornography, you are doing together with them. Yeah. What they are doing. Because you're going to tell me, no, but it's just a movie. Okay. What they are doing in a movie, is it allowed? So when you watch that, what are you trying to achieve? trying to achieve. Pornography is not real. It's the very same way you see Chef Norris killing many people. Yet when they shoot him, they never, they never got him. When he is shoot once, he's getting everyone. You know he's not right, right? You know he's wrong. You know that they are lying. So in pornography also they are lying. Don't be impressed by whatever is happening there. There's many things that have been magnified into that. The role of the devil is to have access. If you cannot do it with your wife, then you, you look for somebody else where to practice. What you cannot do it with your husband, you look someone else to practice. That is giving access. You see, now it gives you, it gives the devil access to your infidelity. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, now what to do? What to do? Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. What to do, we know we should not give access. But now, access has been given. What to do? 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. What should I do now? What you should do, you should examine yourself. The Bible said, examine yourself to see whether you have given him access or not. Examine yourself to see whether you are in faith. Test yourself. Test yourself. Tell you never test yourself. I mean, I'm not here to test you. Check yourself. Check who you have given access. The very same way you've given them access, you can deny them the access and tell them, get out of my life. Hallelujah. The very same way you have given them access, you cannot get them out of my life. The access is expiring right now. Somebody say, the access to the devil is expiring now. So again, the access to the devil is expiring now. The access will expire now. Whatever you're given access, it's okay. You didn't know, you were tricked. There are things even you don't even know, you just found out they're already there, but their access is expiring now. Remember what we said. God said, earth has been given to you. You have the power on earth. Amen. You have power on earth. You have power on earth. Jesus is a human being. He said, all power has been given to me. You have the power, all power now. You can terminate that contract that you have with him. We 
are terminating his contract in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You need now to examine and find out where you are giving access to the devil and terminate that contract by prayer. Cancel it, confess it, cancel it, and tell whatever demon that was in your life to get out of your life in the name of Jesus. Because the devil will always magnify when it is you. When it is other people, they'll do the same mistake, they'll do the same wrong things. Nothing will happen. But you also magnify them because you are the child of God. You don't belong to him. That you want to magnify everything. Every small thing that you do, you want to exacerbate it. You want everybody to know. You want everybody, you know, you want to take it out of proportion. You take it out of proportion because you are the child of God. That's why Matthew chapter 5 says, Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Be excellent as your heavenly father is excellent. Watch yourself now. Do not give them access anymore. Because you can see little things you can give access to the devil. Let us rise up on our feet so that you can pray. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to confess and change our behavior. And also we are going to change the contract. We are going to cancel the contracts. I want you to look at yourself. Examine yourself. Take this couple of seconds to start examining yourself. Examine yourself right now. In which area have you given access to the enemy? Where have you given access to the devil? Your talk, your kind of movies, kind of things you are watching on your phone, your kind of Instagram, WhatsApp and uh, all those social media things, what you are listening to, what you are doing, places you are going, they are places that give access to the enemy. Look at yourself now. The Bible says, examine yourself. Do self-examination. We are not here to condemn anybody. We are here to help each other. Everyone is just checking his life. I am doing my own assignment. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Examine. Which door have you opened? Which access have you given to him? Now, since he entered, he doesn't want to go out anymore. Tell him today is expiring. It is expiring now. Because you are here and you say you'll never leave I need to know I need to know you are here and you say you'll never leave I need to know I need
condemnation this morning in the name of Jesus. Now you have to talk to the devil. Tell him that your contract is expired. You can't continue to be in my life. Tell him from now on, get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Pack whatever you brought, your sickness, your disease, your bad talk, your bad ideas, your bad behavior. Tell him, don't leave anything. Everything you brought, go out with them. Speak to the devil right now. Command him to live your life in the name of Jesus. Your contract is expired in my life. Your contract is expired in my life. Your contract is expired in my brother's life. Expired in my sister's life. Expired in our life this morning. You Satan, you demon, whatever access we have given you in our lives this morning, we are declaring that that, that contract, that, that access is expiring now. Now, pack whatever you brought, pack your behavior, pack your desires, pack your attitude. Get out in the name of Jesus. Live our life right now. Live our life right now. Live our life right now. Whatever you brought, your bad behavior, your bad habit, your bad desire, or your bad talk, your bad actions, get out in the name of Jesus. Leave us in the name of Jesus. Back. You envy, you anger, you jealousy. Get out in the name of Jesus. Get out in the name of Jesus. We are the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Now ask God. Every door that was open to him, ask God, Lord, let that door be closed right now. Tell him, Lord, all the doors that are left open, those I am conscious of, and those I am not conscious of, let all of them be closed now by the blood of Jesus. Close those doors by the blood of Jesus. Father, let all the doors that are left open, right now, let them be closed by the blood of the Lamb. Let the blood of Jesus close all the doors that have opened. Lord, let all those doors be closed. Closing the door means also breaking certain relationship, canceling certain WhatsApp number, canceling and deleting certain number, blocking certain number. There are people that need to block them because they are door, they are access. Father, every door that I open, I close it by the blood of Jesus. I close it by the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, I close any door. Any cell phone number that is not honoring you shall be deleted in the name of Jesus. Any Facebook friend, what is not honoring you under the door shall be deleted in the name of Jesus. Any Instagram connection shall be deleted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. Now tell him, Lord, whatever the enemy has destroyed, restore it in my life. Tell the Lord, whatever the enemy has already destroyed, let it be restored now. Let it be restored. Whatever you lost, let it be recovered now in the name of Jesus. Speak to God, speak to God. Father, whatever I've lost, mighty God, all the loss that I've suffered right now, Lord, I am mighty God. Oh Lord, I'm recovering my loss. I'm recovering my loss in the name of Jesus. I'm recovering my loss. I recover my loss in the name of Jesus. Whatever was destroyed, Father, let it be restored right now. Let it be restored in the life of your people, in the life of your children. Restore, Lord. Restore. 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 Restore in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you because from now on, no access to the enemy. All the doors that I did open are now closed by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever loss I suffer is recovered now. Is recovered now in the name of Jesus and by the mercies of God. I'm recovering all my loss in Jesus' name. Do you believe that you 